I am joined by Dr. Roger Turner, Curator of Instruments and Artifacts at the Science History Institute and a renowned historian and storyteller. With expertise in 20th century atmospheric science and the intersection of history and science, Dr. Turner shares his perspective on how creativity and storytelling can propel scientific understanding and inspire the next generation of diverse professionals. Dr. Turner, thank you so much for joining us. I'm delighted to be here today. Science has always been propelled by people. So how can we as a scientific community attract and grow the field of geoscience, specifically at the intersection of science and art? Art is uh, amazing at bridging um, differences in communities and bringing people together who come from different points of view and different perspectives. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed studying in the history of science is the way that uh, scientists have used art to uh, communicate science to people that needed to learn science but didn't necessarily have the same uh, training or educational backgrounds that the scientists themselves did. One thing I've looked at is the way that meteorologists trained during World War II used comic art to uh, teach meteorology to pilots who needed to understand how uh, to fly and navigate uh, through oh. dangerous weather conditions. That's so cool. Yeah, I always, you know, I'm really passionate about science communication and one of the biggest things is visuals. And there's so much art involved with that and people don't often see that intersection as, you know, really being important or a thing. But, you know, if we're just communicating our science to each other through text and data, what's the use? There's no, you know, value from that. We really have to get it out to people in an understandable way. And visuals are often really important for that and other versions of art. So one thing that, um, that, I, that I love is um, meteorologists during uh, the war uh, and the, the US military hired people like uh, uh, artist uh, Eric Sloan to draw cartoons that translated meteorological um, principles into um, a technique that he called the thought picture method. So it was uh, basically comics and, car and cartoons that would be readily understood um, for the pilots and the technicians who read comic books all the time uh, or read, read comic strips. So here's a great example of, um, of a pilot uh, and sort of illustrating how um, the changing levels of, of, uh, of atmospheric pressure uh, affected the oxygen levels in the blood for pilots. Um, wow. And so he, he did this for, he was a, a passionate illustrator of uh, weather and, um, uh, uh, and meteorology in many ways. That is really, really cool. That is, I, I love that you brought visuals <laughs> as, this, as is appropriate for this talk. So we're obviously living in very dynamic and uncertain times as the new administration takes office. So what concerns you with this and where are you looking for areas of possible common ground specifically with regards to arts and science? I think it's so important that scientists and people in the humanities, people in the arts come together to stand up um, to support each other and to speak for freedom, for freedom of speech, for freedom of expression, for freedom to read and study, but also for freedom to govern our own institutions. To me, I'm, I'm optimistic, but I think it's just so crucial that um, we stick together in, uh, in this, right? We don't retreat to making sure that our own individual disciplines or our own individual departments are all right, but to make sure that we're standing together um, to sustain our institutions as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah, standing together in that you know, interdisciplinary and inclusive way of approaching science these days is, is one of the things that throughout this week we've heard over and over again. Lastly, where can art take science next and where can science take art? Thinking historically, one of the um, remarkable um, things that I've enjoyed learning uh, and enjoyed sort of discovering is these hidden connections between science and art. So one thing that grew out of World War II um, was that meteorologists had, you know, once they had learned that comics and cartoons were an effective way to communicate, uh, they actually brought that um, out of the military into television. So when the television weather report was basically invented in the, the years after World War II, um, many of those first television weathercasters were former military meteorologists who had worked um, f with pilots in the Air Force and the Navy um, during the war. And they discovered that those same techniques of um, using cartoons 
um, that had been so effective in working with pilots actually translated to television. And so that helped to kind of create the visual style of um, the television weather report, which in turn helped make the TV weather report probably the most widely consumed and most popular form um, of science uh, in the United States during the 20th century. Yeah, wow, that is really incredible. And it's so important, this movement of our intersection between art and science with public engagement and getting more people to not only understand what we're saying in earth and space science, but also engage with it. So with that, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this. Thank you so much.